And right here, among the charcoal remains, is just the kind of intriguing little speciality we've been talking about. In the spring following the desolation, there's a plant, an orchid, that has just enough energy to throw up one heart-shaped thumbnail-sized leaf. And a very, very, very long stalk. Even though it's a rare orchid, it's no great beauty, but nevertheless, the inelegant shape is a quite brilliant design for copulation, but not with another flower. No, no, something much more fascinating than that. Slowly, fighting her way up through the still charred sandy ground, a newly hatched female, a thinned wasp emerges and takes her first look at the world. As she lives underground, she's no use for wings, so she's wingless, ant-like and drab, anything but beautiful. The females climb for only one purpose. They want to find males. Then, to go back underground to search out and paralyze beetle grubs in which to lay their eggs. Like a maiden, nervously waiting for a blind date, she adds the finishing touches, at the same time releasing an absolutely irresistible perfume. And she waits to clasp her partner with open jaws. Elegant. The winged males, hot on the scent and eager for action, having emerged a few weeks before the females. And they actually start copulating in flight. He flies her to this flower. There she feeds through him from the tip of his abdomen and gets both sperm and food all at the same moment, and probably the only nectar meal of her life. Then he flies her back home, the honeymoon over, she'll just disappear underground forever. So how does the wasp enter into an affair with this unusual orchid, a hammer orchid? It could be coincidence that all the females are still underground when the orchid flowers, but it is quite beyond coincidence when the flower assumes the shape, mimics the body, and even gives off the scent of the female wasp, and this precisely when there are lots of sex-starved male wasps around. The hinge joint the correct length of arm, a glistening sticky pad between two yellow pollen sacs at exactly the right distance from the dummy wasp must have been grown with incredible accuracy. It is perfect for a bizarre coupling of wasp with flower. Sufficiently deceived, he tries to fly off with her, but succeeds only in catapulting himself into the orchid's anthers. At last, his furry back peels off the yellow pollen-bearing sacks. He gives up and tears himself free. Although the go-between carries the pollen to other flowers. For the orchid's deception to work, he must visit another hammer orchid, like the wasp visiting now, bringing male elements to receptive female parts. With pollen crushed into its stigma, the hammer orchid 
is fertilized. The little dummy female withers, its purpose served. The orchid's meager resources are now required for the swelling seed pod. The deception has worked perfectly. But does it always? <laughs>